There are two big questions that occupy humanity. Are we alone in the universe? And why won't they text us back? So we're stepping up our alien contact game with the Beacon in the Galaxy initiative, a brand new message to the stars designed to inform potential interplanetary neighbours who we are and exactly where they can find us. I really want to hear from other intelligent life in the universe. We're pretty convinced with zero proof that there is life in the solar system off planet Earth, but intelligent life, that's a big one. I'm very excited. It's exciting news, except for a handful of scientists like Oxford's Anders Sandberg. There is this interesting problem that well, maybe the aliens are not nice. There's warning that sharing this info so freely could be risky. Yes, people are worried about making contact with a vastly more intelligent life form because if you look at planet Earth and colonialism, in general, the ones with the better weapons win and the ones with the worst weapons do really badly. And they're worried that the same thing might be repeated. Which is also something theoretical physicist and biopic generator Stephen Hawking was worried about. Meeting an advanced civilization could be like Native Americans encountering Columbus. That didn't turn out so well. And this isn't the first time we've sent out our contact details. Everyone remembers when Drake begged for a callback. Call me on my cell phone. No, sorry, I'm talking about the OG astronomer, Frank Drake. You don't need nobody else, no. Frank Drake was the designer of 1974's Arecibo message, a simple binary message containing the numbers 1 to 10, the atomic numbers of elements that make up DNA, and a pretty decent MS Paint self-portrait. We sent that to a group of 300,000 stars that are about 25,000 light years away from us. Drake's message is only 0.2% into its journey to the M13 star cluster. So us sending a follow-up before the first one has arrived hopefully won't look too desperate. The Earth people are getting closer to that which we fear. But technological advancements mean we can now send out a far more complex message, including a timeline from the Big Bang to now, the solar system's exact time-stamped position in the galaxy, and more detailed images of humans and Earth. I think the search is too important and that we should go looking for intelligent life. It will just change how we behave to each other and our planet. Are they going to be friendly? I hope so. I really think so. I want them to come. So should we keep sliding into ET's DMs with wild abandon? Or is it time to stop thinking of space as safe? We gotta hand it to them though. They, they're far ahead of us. <laughs> How's the message we sent out, though? <laughs> I know! It's like a really rudimentary game of Tetris that we've sent out into space. All we're going to get back is pity. Like, they're not going to try and take <laughs> us over. They'll just give us a pat on the head and go, oh, you're doing a good job. Maybe oh, that's brilliant, then. Yeah, it works. It keeps us safe. Does its job. But if yeah. it's 0 0.2, was it 2, 0.2 of a percent? 0.2 percent. It's not the even there yet. yet. It's like, I think that's like 25,000 years. Before it it's, like us, it's like us getting a message now going, we've created this really cool game, but it's just, you know, the tennis? Pong. Pong, pong, pong yeah. back and forth. Yeah. But by the time that message gets there, Earth won't be here anymore. <laughs> no, that's right. So who are we talking to? <laughs> you mean with global warming, like, we'll beat you to it, OK? <laughs> you can't get us, we'll take but this down. But won't it be amazing when they figure out where Earth is, come, and it's not there anymore? Psych! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Showed the universe.